Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Aeroscale, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. And a big box we have for you today. This is the Mirage 3C in 132nd scale from Italeri. It's a very uh, anticipated kit. I've had numerous people asking me for, for, for about this kit, if we were going to get it, and could they get it to, to do a build review on or a build project. And uh, I kept telling him I didn't know whether we were going to get it. I didn't know, and yeah, then we got it. So, all right. Well, this is number twenty-five oh five in Italeri's uh, uh, numbering scheme. Uh, again, a one thirty-second scale kit of a very large a strategic um, interceptor bomber. I believe is the role of the Mirage three C. I am not an expert on this plane. I may say many strange and silly things, but. Essentially, all I'm doing with this is I'm going to unbox it, and you guys can see some decent uh, photos of it and get a little bit of my limited commentary on, uh, on pulling the pieces out of the box. But I'm going to pretty much do this pretty streamlined. I'm not going to, I'm going to make this a quick unboxing because it's a, even though it's a large kit and it could do a long, long unbox of this kit, but I don't feel like I, do it ju I would do that justice. So primarily, I'm just going to get the box, uh, get, get the kit unboxed, get the photos up, and then pass this over to our uh, reviewer who's going to do a build. And I'm sure uh, we'll see more, very much more on this. So uh, on the side, you can see uh, they show the decal schemes here, which um, look to have uh, quite a few uh, options on them. Uh, and I'm not even going to come close to saying what some of these roundels are. I know. I, I think that one with the, with the round and the square things, I think that's Switzerland, I'm going to say. But, you know, that's as far as I'm going to go with any of those. Uh, photo much included. Um, and on the side, they show some various schemes that are provided. So we've got a uh, Mirage 3C uh, MD Air. Uh, this is uh, French, I'm assuming. So, and then the next one is uh, uh, also a similar unit um, in, uh, these are in, based in France and the other one was based in Dubai. Um, and then a third unit also based in France, 1967 by the way, the first one was 1980, 1978, 1967. So quite an age range uh, difference there. Um, and then the units over here are, um, uh, SAAF, is that South African Air Force? Um, Flying Cheetahs, uh, South Africa, eight, 1982. Um, the Schweizer Luftwaffe, which I think this is Swiss, uh, 1962. And the uh, Mirage 3C, uh, Shakak 59, uh, 101st Squadron, Hatsor Air Base, Six Day War, June 1957. And that's Israeli, I'm guessing. So, all right, let me go. All right, the seals have been broken. So let us let us open it and see what we have. All right, so right off the bat, uh, here I go again. Uh, I can see this clear piece. Looks like it might be in a precarious location, but because um, there have been reports, I guess, we're hearing that the uh, parts have been broken in these. And I can see putting that clear on there, if boom, anything hit the top of that box and pushed down hard enough, yeah, that would, would have gotten broken. But it does not look like ours uh, survived the, the, uh, the shipping process. So um, actually, I'm going to leave the clear in here because I really don't want to mess it up. So I'll, I'll take it out to take the photos, but I don't want to just take it out to make commentary. Oh, this looks nice, nice and clear and so forth. Mm, yes. Uh, Photo etch. Uh, you can see getting a somewhat more close-up view. Um, not sure what some of these parts are doing or for. So again, I'm not going to summarize. We're just going to get through this. All right. So uh, right off the bat, um, for a second bat, the second bat uh, up off the bat uh, <laughs> would be um, the decals and the instructions, obviously. So here we go. Uh, these do have some nice wax paper. Covering them, which I'll put back on there, but uh, but the decals look very very nicely done. Um, they are uh, done by Cartograph, so they should be uh, of good quality and so forth. Uh, but again, we'll take some photos of those. You guys can reference them in the photos if you want to see some of the things that obviously are difficult to spot in the video. 
Um, a common decals uh, insert here was provided. Maybe they were missing stuff on the other decal placement things, and they did provide that. Uh, instruction manual, I'm not going to go step by step on this, but it is long, I'm imagining. Uh, how many pages is it? It is 40 plus 44 pages, 44 pages of instructions. So, yes. Um, first plastic, styrene plastic bit has, ironically, the nose cone is free and just kind of run, rumbling around in there. Um, Again, not seeing any signs of the rumors of damage here. Um, they look good. They look, they're not most of the pieces of them, that nose cone, which I believe was put in there intentionally like that. Uh, doesn't, there's no, there's no place for it to be attached to. So, um, yeah, the, everything looks good. And uh, moving on, the next one is a large bag here. Uh, with the uh, jet engine, the two halves, um, the engine itself, the some of the underside of the plane, panel lines look very nice. Uh, some of the wing structure here as well. Let me go ahead and open. All right. So as I mentioned, um, the engine detail. Uh, you can see. If I can get the camera here without making it jump around too much. Uh, very nice. Um, the panel line detail on the bottom also looks pretty pretty clean, not not overly done. And one of the intakes there for the engine with some fan blades. Look like there might be some some uh, flash or push pin bits that need to be cleaned out of there if you want to try to really get those just just so and here's the wing detail and again there's different panel lines for the upper or lower I'm not sure which one this is actually uh, versus the maybe this is the upper and that was the lower but the upper have larger pieces and then these have kind of a, a small square paneled uh, rivet detail. Um, some bits like this, like this wiring area, looks nice. Uh, stop hitting your camera, Jim. Uh, some of the uh, rear uh, st stabilizer, horizontal stabilizers, and uh, their accompanying pieces. Go ahead. Way. And this last last one. So yeah, I'm not seeing any damaged pieces in this, which is good. Because who wants to get a model that's damaged? But it is a tight fit in this box, so I can see if the box gets crunched at all. And a lot of times it really depends on the shipper. If you're getting these sent by somebody. Um, like a, a retailer or something, they need to send this in a box larger than this box. So, you know, that's their fault if the if the model gets damaged because they sent it in a box that's too doesn't have any space around it. Then that's kind of the problem. You know, it is a, it is a fragile plastic model. Um, so they they should definitely take that up with their retailer if they if they buy it online and it, it didn't get boxed properly and get, then got damaged. And some of the very knobby wheels. Surprised those wheels are that uh, have that much kind of tread uh, displacement to them. This piece broke off, but again, not a not a major issue. Um, some of the missiles and armaments are on here. Obviously, I'll take, I'll take photos of all that stuff. Like you said, you guys who want to really see this stuff up close, uh, I'll I'll get better photos and uh, for this one and uh, try to do a good job with that. Um, what's under here? Anything? No. Nothing in there. Interesting. Why do that then? Why not put these items inside the box? They'd be better protected. Seriously. Hit Larry. Put the, put the items in the box. Or, or come up with a way to lay them down into something that would then protect them. Like if it recessed this, then you could have put the... 
you could still have it displayed like you wanted it, but it could just be down a bit and wouldn't it wouldn't have been up here where potentially see that there's not a lot there for that to yeah. Sorry to get talking again, boxing and packaging, but that's just kind of some basics. Or I'll take this out because it's definitely be good to look at the. Uh, I'm gonna have to take it out eventually, anyways. To photograph in terms it. of the cockpit detail, uh, it looks nice. It looks like they've done a good job uh, anticipating some some needs there. Um, no figures included with this kit. No no pilot figure. Um, the landing gear uh, are here, and um, not much of an expert, but I could ask Ernie G, because he's probably going to be doing landing gear for this kit, I would imagine, being it's a 130 second scale kit. So, uh, panel line detail on the fuselage, let me do this side since it's a little easier, closer to the, is uh, very similar to the, the wings, so. Uh, that looks nice, and um, yeah. So that'll uh, let's go ahead and go to the photos, and we'll come back and conclude. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos and this quick little unbox uh, for the Mirage 3C. Uh, like I said, we're going to be sending this over to Michael Sendera, who's going to be uh, doing a build review, I believe. I'm not sure he's going to blog it as well at the same time, but uh, hopefully he will. And uh, we'll see how, how it comes along. So thanks to our friends over at MRC and Italeri uh, for sending us a sample. And uh, please leave any comments or feedback you'd like, uh, any information, any of my bad faux pas on aircraft because I know I'm not the best on aircraft reviews uh, or aircraft unboxings even. So uh, please leave that commentary and also make sure to like this if you click the like button that will help us with our videos online especially on YouTube. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Cracking the Box. Mm -hmm.